One of the best performers at this year's Paris Olympics didn't even win a medal, but his bespoke pin is just as sought after. Snoop Dogg has walked with the torch in Saint-Denis, danced with Simone Biles, cut laps with Michael Phelps, drafted French Rugby Sevens player gold medalist Anton Dupont to his fantasy football team, hosted a private tour in the Louvre, and of course, demonstrated his new routine at the Equestrian. Okay. Oh, oh, I didn't tell me it was going to be this easy. <laughs> so a couple of thoughts, Tilly and James. Why has Snoop Dogg worked so well as an ambassador at the Games? Uh, off the top, it's refreshing. It's a new idea out of the box. It's like um, completely unexpected. <laughs> when you think of brand ambassadors over time, normally people go for like the really safe conservative bets, which Snoop Dogg is not. <laughs> mm. So what do you, yeah, like what's, what were they thinking? Like what's the what? What do you think the strategy is behind it? I mean, I think it came off the back of a quite successful and viral video that went around of him and Kevin Hart commentating the equestrian dressage. Oh, this equestrian! By the way, look at that horse. Did you? Oh, the horse crip walking, cut. Huh? You see that? <laughs> On the set. <laughs> And there was iconic quotes that came out of that, and the world just responded so well to that. And I think it was a moment of, wow, maybe we don't actually have to have. Sp- sporting legends commentate sporting events. And then he went on to commentate National Geographic videos, which were hilarious. Um, so I think people were like describing the way he's been in Paris as like your lovable uncle who's really supportive and he's rocking up at all of the events and he's wearing the athletes' faces on his T-shirt and particularly at the US women's gymnastics. I think he feels weirdly relatable, even though no one really has someone in their life that is like Snoop Dogg, but he's fun, weirdly relatable. He's well known enough that you recognize the name um, he's also just quirky and a bit bizarre, like going to the equestrian events with Martha Stewart, like that pairing for a couple has been around for a couple of years and that weirdly works. Like it's kind of a proven, they've tested it for a couple of years and now it's just worked so well in Paris. I think that relatable point is one of the keys to choosing an, a brand ambassador and why you use a brand ambassador. Like if we were to look at it in a Stratcom's campaign, it's such a powerful we found it to be such a powerful tactic because people relate better with brand ambassadors than they do the brands themselves. Like if you hear a, um, a traditional CEO or chairperson or someone who works full-time for a brand come out and say all these good things about the brand, it's like, well, yeah, of course you're going to say that. But when an ambassador or a third party gives that third-party validation, it's so much stronger. And if you look at some of the data behind it, um, you know, marketing – marketers and whatnot will tell you it, I think it's over 70 percent more likely to engage in a product or buy a product if it's from a third party validation as opposed to the brand themselves coming out like imagine um you know is the IOC or um the LA and the US committee if their spokesperson was just their CEO coming out and saying yeah come to LA um for the next Olympics is that going to have the same reach as Snoop Dogg yeah, no, absolutely not. Yeah, nowhere near. And I think it also uh, fits or solves a particular problem, which I think is another important thing when you're looking at brand ambassadors, is what is the problem we're trying to solve? And I don't think – I think the problem they're trying to solve is that the Olympics isn't cool and so they want to try and make it cool. And really how do we connect an audience that doesn't really engage in any of these sports year-round, doesn't really know anything about these sports to engage them with. So, like, the biggest obstacle we saw with, like, F1, for instance, is that we need to educate the whole audience so we'll do a documentary series. You can't really do that across 50 sports. So, okay, everyone's going to be engaging in this on a very surface level. How can we make that acceptable? All right, we'll find a person that has heaps of cachet. We'll let them show you how you can also engage in the Olympics in a very casual fashion and let and let that let that success validate your casual connection with the Olympics. And so it kind of like fulfills like, yeah, I'm just like Snoop Dogg. I sit down and go, I call, I don't know what the horse is doing, so I'll call it the crib step or the funny walk or like whatever it is and go, oh, I'm allowed to do that. I feel safe in this environment. And I think with like traditional commentary, it can feel a little bit like, you know, mansplaining or people coming out and sort of showing off their prowess and the sport and all the lingo and things like that. A lot of the time people at the couch at home don't actually care about that stuff. They want to get it's entertainment. Like for them, they might even turn the commentary down because they're just there to watch the athletes. And I think they combine this one really well with like, they knew that Paris was going to be a social media Olympic games. Right. And we've seen that with the fallout from things that have been happening in the Olympic village. And we know that has been working against the Paris Olympic team's favor or like the, um, sorry, organizing committee. 
but they've combined that sort of social media world with mainstream world really well. And I think Snoop has done that exceptionally well. I don't know about you, but I had no idea Snoop Dogg was going to be there as an ambassador. I had no idea he was going to be NBC's commentator. So for me, I was going to watch the Olympics for the sport and for two weeks of fun that I wouldn't use and sports I wouldn't usually watch. Do we actually need to have ambassadors to get people there? Do we need them to have an audience? Because we haven't really done this before. I think yes, because we're trying to attract or they're probably trying to attract broader audiences or different audiences. You're a sports nuffy, so of course you're going to watch the Olympics. <laughs> like, And I, I think that goes the same for the three of us. But there are a lot of people who probably aren't as interested or as invested uh, outside of our bubble. And that's where I think the Snoop Dogg uh, use uh, – to your point, Gordon, about having a very particular objective and if that objective was to broaden the reach of the Olympics to people um, beyond those who would normally watch it, then that's such a great tactic. And I think that's one of the keys in choosing a brand ambassador is having a particular objective for why you're going to use them, which would then inform who you choose. Because a lot of time we'll have people come to us, they're like, oh, oh, we, we want help with a PR campaign, we want to do a PR stunt, we want to do this big launch, we want you to get... Um, you know, this brand ambassador and this influencer to support us and we will go back to them with, yeah, okay, but why? Mm. Like why are we doing this? Why do we need a brand ambassador? Who are you trying to reach and why would we? Why is a brand ambassador the right tactic to use to reach that group? Mm. So I think if you're a brand or if you're an organising committee or if you're a sports broadcaster and you're thinking should we use a brand ambassador, first ask why would we use one? And that will then inform the rest of the strategy and the rest of the conversation. And I think the other part too is once you've worked out your objective is to go, yes, the ambassador can do so much, but they can't actually fulfill or solve our problem. And I think that's the part where LA is like, we've, we've committed to having and hosting Olympics in four years time and we probably can't get out of it. So we need to make it as successful as possible. So step one is to validate the Olympics as an event more so than just a sporting uh, sporting event, an event more broadly, which I think Snoop's achieved, and then obviously NBC has brought the rights to that, so we want they want people to watch it, and then it becomes about the funnel. So not only is Snoop there as an NBC special comments person or a content producer, for lack of a better word, he's also there as part of the of the funnel. So you'll see the clip of Snoop dancing on Instagram. You'll go, oh, what's that? Oh, that's on NBC. Oh, they had the Olympics. Mm-hmm might turn it on. And I think they've broken their record for the most popular broadcast ever at the Olympics, despite the US not actually being as successful as they had been for the first week and a half. So there is two or three groups coming together. And I think if you can have tangible outcomes underlying the reason for using an ambassador, that's much better than just, oh, we should have an ambassador. I would also say as another element, it made Paris look good. So we know that the Paris Games has been faced with lots of challenges, which we are going to go into in a different podcast. He almost has become like the face of the Paris Olympics. So we've forgotten about all the drama with the Sen. People are not really latching onto the negativity because they're seeing so much Snoop Dogg content come out and it's entertaining and it's funny. And I think if you look at LA in the same way for Brisbane 2032, if we send a really solid Aussie ambassador to the LA Games, makes LA look good. And then the same thing happens in Brisbane whoever takes it after Brisbane. So then you've kind of brought out the um, the third question here is then, you know, we've worked out when you should send an ambassador, when you shouldn't, and how to underline the strategy behind that. So the big question for us, I suppose, in this hypothetical situation is should we send someone to LA as the Brisbane 2032 ambassador? And if so, who should it be? Well, if we want to broaden the reach uh, to new target markets, as we've just been talking about, then absolutely. Like it's clearly worked uh, for Snoop Dogg and for the US and NBC. So surely Australian brands or even the Australian organising committee should consider it. Um, the question uh, is who? Well, I think we need to look through, uh, as you would with any brand ambassador, someone that's going to reach those target markets. So they've got to be well known um, to the target markets that we're trying to, that we're going for. But also I think you've got to do a fair bit of due diligence on the individual, like uh, do they have any issues in their past, any reputational issues, Um, how do they perform in the media, is there any risk of them making a slip up or a mistake and I think Snoop was reasonably high risk but probably safe enough because he does have some history Mm -hmm. but like pretty safe bet nowadays I think compared to younger Snoop. So we'd have probably have to go through the same process. Um, 
I think the pool is probably smaller for Australia because we've got less well-known celebrities. So, you know, yeah, you're looking at your main Hollywood stars, your Hemsworths, your Hugh Jackman, well-known across the world, very safe bet. But are they interesting enough? Like no offence to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Margot Robbie maybe, that's another one you'd throw in the mix, well-known. But do they bring the same sort of character and fun as Snoop Dogg? Mm. Maybe not. And what problem do they solve as well? So I suppose the the question around is like we're, we're looking for like, oh, the ambassador worked. But to go back to your initial point was like just because it worked once or you think you should have one, do you actually need one? For Brisbane 2032, as we said, like most Aussies – are very patriotic when it comes to sport. The Olympics come around and we don't really care what's on the TV as long as it's green and gold winning gold. Do we think that that will last for Brisbane? Like do we actually need, if if the objection ob- objective for Brisbane 2032 was to have Australian audience be the most capsulated, isn't that almost a given? We're talking about a global reach though, aren't we? We're not just talking about one mm. country. And in that case, does the ambassador need to be Australian? Well, I think the ambassador needs to be well known globally. So I was even thinking, do you go for like the Wiggles or something? Like, do you go for several ambassadors from a group? Or, like, do you? I don't know if it has to follow the same format as Snoop Dogg because if we yeah. follow the same pattern every time, it's going to become boring and people were not going to be that interested. Mm. And it's got to be creative and new and interesting. Like, do you go for something that's really well known, like the Wiggles? Bluey, Bluey. like yeah. well, Bluey could be the mascot. Like, I think it's a good idea. I mean, I, t- to your question before, they have to be Australian because that brand ambassador has to align with the brand that you're trying to put forward. I think Mm -hmm. the Australian Olympics part of the legacy that you're trying to build is about, it's a tourism ad for Australia. It's an ad about our success of a country. Like they've got to be Australian Mm -hmm. for those reasons, I think. The same reason why, like we've seen recently in Australia, some of the international uh, platforms, delivery partners, uh, I think is it Menulog and a few others have, have been... Is it Snoop Dogg? That was Snoop Dogg yeah, as well. Yeah. Snoop Dogg too. <laughs> I don't think that lands as well in no. the Australian market because it's like, what, like, why are Americans advertising a local food delivery service to me? Like, I, I'm not. Yeah, that hasn't landed well with me, and I've heard other criticisms about it. So I think they have to be Australian. I also kind of like the idea of going down the comedian route because that aligns with the Australian sort of larrikin, bringing a fresh approach to the Olympics outside of sport, like taking the Mickey. If you think back to Sydney, like Roy and HG, they were loved during the Olympics with their Olympic show. And when I think back to Sydney Olympics, like a lot of my memories are from Roy and HG and their skits and their um, like daily coverage. You know, can we find uh, current comedians, Australian comedians that could be those brand ambassadors for us? And that leads me down the path of like your Auntie Donna's. Um, particularly because we know that they've got that global profile. I'm not sure how big they are in Europe, but we know they had a show in the US and they could uh, open up that new target market to people that perhaps are less sports-minded or focused. You know, that could expand the reach potentially. Or do you lean on like your kind of Kath and Kim format? Like do you go back to some of your old classic Aussie shows and kind of bring the nostalgia back a little bit? Which I think we did in Sydney, didn't we? Like dust off some of the old classics, mm. get the castle team back together. Just put it on working dog's plate. They'll figure <laughs> yeah. out, they'll come up with something. I think whoever the ambassador be is going to be, they kind of need to really sell the Aussie way of life as well. I think some reason why Australians are quite relatively well liked around the world is because of our lifestyle and the way that we speak and our humour and things like that. I think the ambassador needs to embody all those things, which is not easy, I guess, but it's a big part of how you sell Brisbane 2032. Yep. Maybe we commission Tim Minchin to put together a, a new play or musical about setting up the Brisbane Olympics partners with Working Dog, so you go Utopia style, mm-hmm. like how to prepare for the Brisbane or Olympics. Or the games. <laughs> yeah, the games all over again. <laughs> Ideas flowing deluxe. Well, our cups are empty, so we better get back to the office. But we'd love to hear your thoughts on Snoop's performance in Paris and who your ambassador would be for the Brisbane Games. So let us know your picks in the comments below.